gut-wrenching. I mean, makes you have a stomach ache. Now six deputies are investigating after they say a one-year-old was fatally shot by her sibling. Plus another day with an excessive heat warning in play. We are even warmer this afternoon than yesterday afternoon. Find out if there is any relief in sight for the heat. And how to stay safe during this heat. Plus how to save some money on your electric bill. You can match with your outfit or, you know, you can go with colors. Opening day in Del Mar is about more than just horse racing. We'll give you a look at the fashion and the hats. You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. We do begin with this tragic story out of Fallbrook this morning. A one-year-old was shot and killed by their three-year-old sibling. Glad you're with us here. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Anna Laurel. Deputies say the three-year-old got a hold of an unsecured gun. CBS 8's Chris Grow is live outside the San Diego County Sheriff's Department headquarters. Chris, just a horrible story to have to report. What can you tell us? A, a tough one to have to report today, but again, want to make sure that we all have this information readily available. And the latest we're hearing from the San Diego, uh, again, County Sheriff's Department is that it was a three-year-old brother that unfortunately got a hold of this handgun and shot his one-year-old sister. Now, this, uh, according to the San Diego County Sheriff's Department, happened around 730 in the morning yesterday. Uh, the child was brought to Palomar Medical Center but was pronounced dead at around 830 in the morning. So about an hour after that shooting was reported. Now, as for the actual incident itself, there's not a whole lot of information that's being released at this time. We do know that deputies and detectives were at that scene on stagecoach for several hours, in fact, well into the night. And it wasn't until about the afternoon or nighttime that neighbors had an even idea of what happened. They knew something happened, but they didn't have any of the specifics. They didn't understand what was going on, why there was this huge law enforcement presence. And now, unfortunately, as many of them are waking up this morning to find out the news or having again to kind of face the reality yet again, 24 hours later, uh, just coming to grips here of, of this tragedy that hit this family. Now, as far as a name that has not been released, San Diego County Sheriff's Department is saying that they are withholding that right now uh, out of sensitivity for the family at this time. Of course, if anything further develops out of the story, we will be sure to bring you those details. But for now, we're going to send things back to you, Eric and Anna. All right, again, a tough story to deliver here this morning. Thank you, Chris. By law, all guns in San Diego County must be stored safely. An ordinance that took effect last year requires guns to be secured with a trigger lock or be locked in a container. At the state level, California says a person cannot store a gun where a child may have access to it. And guns are the leading cause of death for kids and teens in the U.S. A new study out of Ohio State University indicates having young children watch a gun safety video might protect them better when they're around firearms. The study found children who watched the gun safety video 28% less likely to touch a gun they found hidden in a drawer, and 20% were less likely to pull the trigger. We've got breaking news just coming into the newsroom. We're just learning a U.S. national is in custody in North Korea. The U.S. citizen was on a tour to a Korean border village and crossed the border into the north without authorization. Right now, the United Nations Command is working with North Korea to resolve the incident. This is all the information we have right now. Of course, we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Hey, and take a look at this video from overnight. Uh, right now, police looking for the driver who crashed into this fire hydrant and then drove off. Happened before midnight last night, the 4800 block of Federal Boulevard in the mid city area. You can see that broken fire hydrant sent water shooting high into the air. If you have any information about this hit and run driver, you're asked to call police. Also new this morning, a man was attacked by a person with a hammer in City Heights. This happened just before midnight in the 4400 block of Whiteman Street. Now, this is the same area where a man slashed part of a woman's scalp with a sword last week. The man who was attacked last night with a hammer, he was taken to the hospital. Still not clear how serious his injuries are. It's also not clear if any arrests have been made, but you're asked to call police if you have any helpful information. This morning, a man accused of burglary while working as a paramedic is expected in court. According to the UT, Nicholas Connery worked for the ambulance company Falk. The company told the newspaper that Connery was arrested on duty but is no longer working there. He also faces charges of identity theft and possession of an assault weapon and fentanyl.
Today, the city of Poway could move forward with its own homeless encampment ban in public spaces. A second reading is scheduled today, and if passed, it would take effect in 30 days. This comes after the city of San Diego passed its own encampment ban. And we have a new update here this morning. Officials say the mountain biker who died over the weekend in the Hakumba Mountains was just 24 years old from Otai. The biker died while riding in extreme heat after he and his friends stopped to help a group of hikers who were dehydrated. Temperatures there reaching 110 degrees that day. And investigators say the biker collapsed from severe heat. He looked um, fit and able, uh, like the rest of his uh, mountain biking crew that was with him. Uh, the extreme temperature, it doesn't matter how fit you are, it's, it's just a treacherous area. Officials are urging people who want to hike or bike to either go very early in the day or very late. And even better, they say, it's just better to wait a few days for things to cool down a bit. Coming up, we're going to have a closer look at how to stay safe in the heat and how to save some money on your electric bill. But right now, let's get to meteorologist Evan Ronnie for a check on our hot forecast on this Tuesday, Evan. Yeah, the downside is that if you are planning on waiting a couple days for the alleviation of this heat, it's probably not going to come. We have models that show over the next 10 days we could hold on to this excessive heat warning. Right now, excessive heat warning set to expire on Friday. Models show that beyond Friday we will remain hot. So that would mean that the National Weather Service would extend or reissue uh, those heat related alerts. Let's take a look at your forecast for the day. Coastline remains the place to be for more mild conditions. Upper 70s along the coast, upper 80s and low 90s as you start to make your way east. Our western valleys are near 90 by the time we get to about 2 p.m. Uh, looks like that the farther east you go, we could be in the mid 90s this afternoon. Uh, 93 across the mountains, 113 out there for the deserts. Mountains and deserts are where we have that excessive heat warning. There's a chance that we see it issued for your inland valleys, but for now your coastline and your inland valleys do not have one in effect. Uh, marine layer is helping to keep the coast a bit more mild. This is La Jolla facing east. Sunrise was at 553. Sunset not coming until 756. And what this means for us with this view out there is there is a bit of fog, so watch out for reduced visibility, especially close to the coast along the five. Uh, what we expect is that by the time we get to 7, 8 a.m., we'll see these clouds lift and then pull their way back. They'll recede quite a bit, and that'll mean that we are going to have a uh, sunny afternoon ahead. Looking at your temperatures out the door right now, 67 in Oceanside, 66 in Del Mar, 68 in El Cajon, 70 in Alpine. So these temperatures are quite mild, and in many cases, they're still a little bit warm out there. But compared to yesterday, we've cooled down two degrees in Oceanside, one degree in Carlsbad and Encinitas, and three degrees in Ramona. This is again compared to 24 hours ago, but in many cases, our temperatures overnight, they're warmer on average. Let's look at your five day forecast where our future shows more warm temperatures on the way. And in fact, we will probably get warmer than where we are today. Today is warmer than yesterday. It, it shows a good possibility that by Thursday will be even warmer. These are only single degree changes day to day. Keep that in mind. So not going to be the most noticeable. Uh, however, still showing that we are on a gradual warming trend through the upcoming weekend. Let's take a look at traffic at 608 right now. Want to start off with a crash that we have been talking about for the last uh, about hour and a half or so. This is in the downtown area. Traffic collision, Little Italy downtown uh, issued at 445. Minor injuries reported Columbia Street and Hawthorne. Essentially, if you're trying to get to and from the airport, you can expect some backups on Hawthorne and that is at that five on ramp and off ramp. We also want to get a check of your border wait times this morning. 70 minutes right now at the San Ysidro Port of Entry, 70 minutes at the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. For more on highway conditions in San Diego County, head to cbs8.com slash traffic. Back to you too. All right, Evan, thank you. Still ahead, we're working for you with tips to stay safe in all this heat. And how to save you some money on that electric bill, plus this. It's all the buzz, how you can help grow the bee population from your backyard.